up guys and welcome to another episode on the channel. Today I'm going to be working on part two of Rick's RXTX 300. I have the head over here. Rick wants to do all the valves. So I went ahead and I already took all the valves out, got this cleaned up, prepped up, ready for the new valves. Here are the new valves here. These are from my buddy Ernesto Calas, AKA Calas Performance. He is the one and only other person that's on my wall right there, man. You know, big shout out to Ernesto, man. Been a great mentor to me. I've learned a lot from him. I got all of Rick's parts here. These are all the bolts, all the studs, head gasket, everything we need to get his motor put back together. I don't know if you guys can hear, but I'm kind of slurring my words. I just came from the dentist and I don't feel nothing. So, yeah, so you're going to need a couple of things for this. Basically, they have this little guy right here. This will suction onto the valve and then you do it by hand you move it back and forth and that will lap the valve in i don't have time for that plus it's a pain in the butt so uh good thing i play football not basketball you got your valve grinding compound that stuff goes a really long way you only need a couple dabs on each valve when you do it and then what i do instead of having that wood suction cup tool i created this little thing it's just a drill bit zip tie and a piece of holes where the valve actually goes into and it keeps it pretty pretty sturdy. And then with the drill, I use that to go back and forth to lap the valves in. That way I don't have to fight with the, the wood thing and, and uh, you know, and lap them in, it's a pain in the ass. So I'm gonna start doing that. You guys will see a little bit, probably not record the whole thing, but you'll get the idea, so we'll get it going. All right, so basically what this is doing is it's creating a new a new seat basically where this is going to ride on. So as you can see, this is what you want right here, this this gray line. That just means that it's, you know, it's cut to this valve. So as you can see, this valve also has that gray line. So now this will match with this. And I can move on to the next one. So we're going to do that to all the valves. And then once that's done, I'm going to get springs and retainers and stick them all on there so let's keep it going see I got all the valves lapped in so from here on we're gonna go ahead and get the valve springs and retainers flip the head over install those and that will pretty much set up the head ready to go for installing so I'm gonna go ahead and get all his springs and retainers right here that I have collected in this bag and um, I also have the uh, real easy tool man Riva sells this it will help you do the job a lot easier. And uh, yeah, let's keep it going. All right, now with the Revo tool installed, what this does is this allows me to compress the spring so that I could go ahead and put the keepers in on either side of the valves. And I'm gonna explain that real quick. So here's your valve. The valve has these little grooves up top. Those little grooves hold these right here, which is what's called a keeper and they go right on the groove like this, right? 
when that's in there, you have your springs. This is a retainer, right? This goes over that. Okay. Now, what, what this retainer does is this holds the valve from falling into the engine. So in order for that to happen, there's these keepers. So these keepers will go onto this valve like this. There's one there and one on the other side. I'm gonna try to do this. All right, and then that's what holds the valve together. So this is how it would look inside of here. So you can see the valves are in there, they go through there. So this is how it's set up. So if this retainer up here, if this or these were to fail, you're gonna destroy your engine basically. So just to show you, let's say those fail, right? And that's what's holding the valve in here. Now, valve drops. Oh, blam! Blam! Basically, this little guy, once I tighten this, it's gonna compress the spring, as I will show you. All right. Now what that does is it gives me access to put these little tiny keepers in. I use this little magnetic screwdriver and I throw some of this on here just so that the keepers stay stuck to it. Cause sometimes you put the keepers and they fall out when you're playing around. So let's try it, let's see how it works. There you go, your valve is set and ready to go. So I'm gonna keep doing that throughout the whole head. I'll let it record for a little bit. Hopefully we get this thing done here in the next couple of minutes and we can start working on the bottom end. I got the ARP head studs all down in. They all have to be hand tight, so they're all in there now. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is get some lubricant on the threads, get these nuts in, and uh, torque these things down to 100 pounds with the head on it, obviously. But uh, my boy Ray owns Power Up Dino Solution next door. And uh, what's happening? If you guys need any dino services, that's the man to talk to. Bring anything. What'd you say? Bring the power. Bring your favorite tuner. Bring it all, we got it. There it is, we got the, the fastest plaza in town. Come check us out. All right, I went ahead and got the Comedic Head Gasket laid down. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this head, slide it down on the uh, studs there, and then uh, start torquing up.
that's that. So the head is now torqued down to 100 foot pounds. Now I'm gonna flip the motor over and put the new rod bearings in, ARP rod bolts, the crank, the balance shaft, everything that goes in the box. Yo, so I just came on here, right, to check, check, check YouTube. Because obviously I'm trying to get paid with this, right? I'm not doing this for free. So, we've hit over a thousand and over four thousand public watch hours. Yes. Thanks to everybody that subscribed and has watched the videos. I appreciate it. We've done this in two months. So we're gonna keep it rolling and hopefully blow this thing up even bigger. All right, as you can see, I have Rick's bottom end stuff here. So these are the new rod bearings. I use only c OEM parts for this stuff. We got the rocker arm ARP bolts. We got the cam gear bolts, flywheel bolts. I got some new guides for him because his old guides, as you can see, got all chewed up from the previous timing chain. You can see, so we're gonna throw those away. And then the big one is right here. New timing chain and the ARP rod bolts. I already took them out of their packages. So we're gonna be taking these guys out, switching the bearings that are in each one of these rods, putting the ARP rod bolts here, and then I could go ahead and get the crank and the balance shaft and get it in there. So I'm gonna get right into it. I'm gonna get all this stuff taken care of and you'll see the process. Boom. All right, so I just had uh, Nelson drop off this, I wanna say it's a 2007 or 2008 RXP, having real bad cavitation problems. Check this out. I was hoping it was just a wear ring, uh, but obviously it's not just a wear ring, so I told him go ahead and just drop it off for me. I was gonna change the wear room real quick uh, since he lives about 30 minutes from me. But, uh, you know, once I took it apart, it was obviously needed a little bit more love. So uh, I'm going to leave that alone for now. Probably get to it later. I'm going to keep chugging along on this motor. I went ahead and removed this flywheel and the magneto and the crank pickup wheel. So that way I could see this timing mark right here. So that timing mark has to line up with the timing mark on the balance shaft. So what I do is I just put it right onto it like that and then I just roll it down and that will put you put your timing with the balance shaft perfect every single time as you can see so that means it's ready to go drop in some thrust washers here here throw some assembly lube and keep on going at it I got the flywheel installed, the crank pickup, and the magneto. Next thing is to get our red Loctite, hit all the ARP flywheel bolts. Those are going here. My boy Angel came by to work on his wife's ski. Are you gonna get this thing running today? I hope so. If not, she'll probably kill me. It's gonna run. She's gonna kill you? Yeah. Forensic files. Or what is it? It's been sitting in the garage for like six months. Without being cooked. Six months in the garage. Sounds like my stuff. Alright. Yeah. the assembly lube wherever the bearings are going to be touching just a slight little line of silicone you don't have to kill it and now we could switch this guy and put it on there
can see the motor is all done. Everything's torqued up, put together. Yo, I'm trying to make a video over here. Man, so rude. So yeah, everything's torqued up, ready to go. Tomorrow I'm gonna go ahead and get this one back in there. I gotta clean up everything inside of the ski though. There's some coolant in here, some bolts laying around. We don't need those bolts, just lightweight now. So uh, get everything in there tomorrow and go test it. Hopefully, hopefully I know how to build a motor. So, oh, Angel got that new swag on though. What's up, model, model? Aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we changed the shirts up a little bit. I got, the website is gonna be up soon and uh, you guys could order the merch on there. I got, I'm gonna try to get hats and armbands and shirts and whatever the case may be. So just hold on for that one. It's kind of hard to do that and everything else we're doing, so. But uh, yeah, you yeah. got that? But yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I gotta ship out a couple packages today. I screwed up and I forgot to send the catch can. My wife is here. Hi, wife. My wife. Oh, hi. <laughs> so yeah, we're almost done today. And then we out this beer. Yeah. Say bye to YouTube. <laughs> All right, so everybody already left the shop. I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna move Rick's ski into position to drop that motor in tomorrow. And I'll probably clean it up and then uh, you guys can see I have my computer opened up because as soon as I finish moving Rick's ski I'm gonna edit this video.